And today I'll be teaching you Structured Query Language Injection, SQLI. So right in front of us, we have Open Web Application Security Project Bricks. So this is a vulnerable web application platform for us to load our SQL injection and payloads into the website so that we can gain access into different components of the database system. And the database systems houses all the sensitive data records like usernames, email addresses, passwords. Whether the passwords are protected using hashes or not, either way, we will learn about how to break into those passwords too. And that is really scary because the first part is learning about how can we manually run our injection payloads into the site. And the second part is we can identify vulnerable parameters very, very quickly and be able to pull out lots of information easily from a highly automated SQL injection tool. And this is frightening because it speeds up the whole process of penetration testing into any website, any web application platform. So right in front of us, we have Open Web Application Security Project Bricks. And if you see right here, this is a website. And this could be an informational site, it could be a login site, it could be a site that provides e-commerce services, whichever the case is. So if we go to the top right corner, we have this particular section called Login Pages. So let's go ahead and click on it. So once you're in, this is a wonderful way for you to learn about penetration testing onto any web application sites. So right here, all I got to do is click under, say, the first part, which is basic login. So let's go ahead and click on it. And here it states the following. You are not logged in. And the first thing that you want to do whenever you reach into any site is to go through what I call a happy journey map, meaning that this is what is to be expected from the outcome of the logic that is being built into the web application system. So if I go ahead and enter, say, for example, a username called Loi Liang Yang, okay, and I enter some random password and I click submit. And of course, right here, it says the following, wrong username or password. And you see one more particular notification at the bottom, one message here, which is the feedback. And this is useful for you to picture what is going on behind the website as the application server tries to connect to the database and pull out query from the database system. And the database houses all these records, like usernames, passwords, email addresses, and so on and so forth. So it has a lot of personal and sensitive data. So right here, what we can see is that we have the following. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go ahead and open up, say, a text editor, and I will call it, say, I will use mousepad. Okay. And we can go ahead and open it up. And I can do a right click and I can paste it right here. And we can see over here. And this is how the application servers talk to the database, literally. So here we have select star, which is all from users where name equal, all right, followed by a password. And this is the query that is being sent over from the application server into the database. And right here, what we can notice is that we are trying to find ways of bypassing the security mechanism and say, we know what is the name. Perhaps that there is a username that we could find on LinkedIn as part of information gathering. We could find on Facebook about the employees of the company, all right, or even in the website itself, they could have a particular page that shows the employees who are working in the company as a directory and so on. So many different ways to do your reconnaissance, to do information gathering. So here, all you got to do is say, enter someone you know. So it could be Tom, right? So in this case, and we have the password field. So what we can do, so in a SQL query, what we need to do is to ultimately get a true statement. So all I got to do now is to enter the following, say we have no idea what's the password. We can enter or, okay, one equal one. Okay, and let us try and insert this into the login page and look at what happens. So here I can go back into the website, I can enter Tom. And what I'll do next is to go ahead and copy and paste the payload that we have just created right here. So I can go ahead and copy this and I'll paste it into the password field. So once I paste it, I'll click submit and let's see what happens. That's it. We have successfully logged into the site, successfully log in. And as you see at the bottom, select all from users with name equal Tom and password, okay, is as such or one equal one. And what does or one equal one means, right? So if you remember back in school, one equal one is true and it always is true or one equal one means that it will always be true. So this statement is always true. And as such, as a result of that, the web application server will issue you say a cookie, a session cookie, whichever the case is, and you will gain access into the site. A lot of sites are pretty secure now and they would have different layers of security. So one of those particular word lists that you want to look out for is actually the word list that could help us find out whether, okay, 
we have different kind of payloads that we can utilize as part of the SQL injection. And we have over here, we have general injections, other stress, vulnerabilities, web services. So let's go ahead and CD and change directory into injections, enter LS. And I can do say, for example, hit SQL.txt. So these are all the different kind of payloads that you can inject into the site, literally. And this is how we can identify whether this particular input field is vulnerable to it. So I can enter cat sql.txt, hit enter on this, and we can see all these different SQL payloads that you can inject into the page. Say, for example, your single quote, your double quote didn't work. Then what can we do? What we can do now is to use other forms of payloads here that you can see to run the attack against that specific parameter and see whether we're able to ultimately get an error page, all right, or to get some kind of response from the server that is different from what is normal. And that's the whole idea behind SQL injection. And next up, what I want to introduce to you is a way for us to do a highly automated matter in terms of finding out whether the input fields are vulnerable. So what I can do now is go ahead and go to the top right corner. I can use Foxy Proxy and we'll click under Burp Suite. So this would enable the proxy to intercept our posts into the site. So all I got to do now is just go ahead and enter Burp Suite. So I can launch Burp Suite directly from here so that we can see what kind of post is being sent over into the site. Okay, so here I can delete the following temporary file. I will not update now. Click next, use burp defaults. And right here we have the burp suite community edition and we click on the proxy tab and ensure the intercept is on. So here we can see that intercept is on. So that's great. So what we can do next is to go ahead and enter some normal value and go ahead and click submit and that will get intercepted immediately by burp suite as you can see right here so what i can do now is to copy the entire post all right the entire post request and copy it and what i will do now is to save it into a file all right so i'll save it into a file and i can go ahead and save this file all right so let's go ahead and say create a file and let's name it as oops break sql injection okay so let's go ahead and do a touch OWAPS breaks injection. Okay, hit enter on this. And what I can do next is use the mouse pad, open up this particular file. All right, so open it up and we can see right here and I can paste it and I can save it. So let's go ahead and save the information. So this is OWASP breaks injection. Okay, so what I can do next is to go ahead and use SQL map to help us target the parameter automatically to find out whether it is injectable, whether it is vulnerable to structure query language injection. So all I got to do now is enter SQL map. Okay, followed by dash R to specify the file that we have just created, which is the post request. So we have OWASP breaks injection. All right, and next what we can do is to specify the target parameter. So in this case, we can enter the following. All right, so we can enter dash followed by P, right? So this is the parameter that we're gunning for. So enter username. So hit enter on this and you can see right here. All right. It looks like the backend DBMS is MySQL. Do you want to skip task payloads specific for other database management systems? So very, very quickly, we are able to identify vulnerable parameters. So as you can see here, username might be injectable. So that's one, MySQL database, and two, might be also vulnerable to cross-site scripting, which we will do up on a separate tutorial fully about cross-site scripting attacks. So do we want to skip? Yes. So they could save us a lot of time. And do you want to include, all right, all tasks for MySQL extending provider level? All right, so let's go ahead and enter yes for this. And right here, it is running all those injections into this particular parameter to see whether we're able to probe the database, whether we are able to bypass the web application checks, the sanitization. And very quickly, right here, we can see that the following time-based blind is injectable, meaning that we have found a way for us to bypass the security checks and gain full control of the database just like that very, very quickly we are able to identify the vulnerable parameter. And what we can do next is the following. Do you want to retry to find proper union column types with fuzzy tests? So enter a no for this. Okay, injection not exploitable with null values. Do you want to try a random integer value for option union character? All right, so enter yes on this. And again, they're highlighting recommended steps that you can take next in SQL Map. So this is a fantastic tool, highly automated to test your web application systems to look at vulnerabilities, whether they are injectable. And at the same time, if you're opening up a web application firewall and you're keen to see whether you're able to detect all these different kind of payloads coming in, again, this will be a wonderful way for you to add in those checks and sanitization and at the same time detection capability so that you can block anyone who is using these tools to hijack into your website. Next up, all right, do you want to try with a random 
value. All right, enter yes on this. And it states the following, okay? Post parameter username is vulnerable. Do you want to keep testing the others, if any? All right, so there's no need for that. So let's go ahead and right here, we got the following details. SQL map identified the following injection points with a total of four, two, three HTTP requests. So another way in terms of defense is to also look at the threshold that you have as the web request coming in from a particular IP address. So if an IP address was probing your website much more than what is considered as normal. So your normal user go to your website, they do a login, they search for some products, and then the checkout, and that could be possibly say 20, 30 requests on average per minute. And it's almost come in with over 400 requests over a minute. So there could be something malicious that a user is trying to do into your website. And you want to actually block that specific IP address or all those different kind of payloads from coming into your website, which could then ultimately give them further access into different parts of the site. So going back to the tutorial here, so we managed to identify that the backend database management system is MySQL. So very quickly, we found out that we have the parameter, all right, and Boolean based blind and time based blind. So this particular parameter is vulnerable to this two different payloads, all right, these two different type of attacks under SQL injection. So what we can do next is to go ahead and enter double dash dump, hit enter on this, and we're trying to dump out all the values, all the columns, all the rows, all the cells inside the database system. So right here, we can find out the following, all right? Before you even scroll down further, we can look right here. We have the columns for table users, and then we have the ID users, name, email, password, host, all right? And we scroll down further, we can get all the retrieve information. So we literally got the username, the email address right here, admin, tom at getmantra.com. And we scroll down further, we have Harry, we have Ron. Okay, do you want to store hashes to a temporary file? So if you're doing any kind of password cracking, you can store this to a temporary file. For our case, we are not going to do that. So I enter no for this. And do you want to crack them via dictionary-based attack? Why not? All right, so let's see what is the password being stored for certain users inside the database system. So enter yes for this. And this is our dictionary file. So there is a word list inside USR share SQL map. So hit enter on this. Do you want to use common password suffixes? So enter no. So again, right here, we are doing dictionary-based cracking immediately. And over here, we can see the whole list of all the users, all right, the email addresses. And over here, we have the following password field. We managed to crack it in seconds. So very quickly, we are able to see all the data that is housed behind the web application server inside the database. So you saw how quickly we're able to get all the sensitive data, personal information of the entire website using SQL injection. So we learn about manual SQL testing. We also learn about using automated tools like SQL map to help us gain unauthorized access into the entire site. And it's very, very scary. So you got to protect your website against all these possible threats as quickly as you can using layer seven, using layer four, looking at a threshold of requests coming in, looking at all the different kind of payloads that's heating into your web application firewall, detect those as quickly as you can and block those users from further access into your website, else they would be able to do all sorts of funny things on your site. So once again, I hope you have learned something valuable in today's tutorial and like, share and subscribe to the channel so that you can be kept abreast of the latest cybersecurity tutorial. Thank you so much once again for watching.